Find a way to score. I, I can't believe it has taken them eight seconds into what a look by Steven. Say that there's some coaching buff, but it doesn't mean that Anonymous is helpless. Nice pass here. This one actually back into Sarah. Say calculated or not, it doesn't matter. How about the second? Trying to make it herself. The double, the triple, the quad tap attempt going on through. Just an absolute nuisance. Nines, the angle, the save. Look at the angle. Cash Jam providing more pressure. Crimson getting bumped into this ball. I think she'll get a shot because of it. In control, manages to still retain control all the way from the corner into the back of the net. Comes into the ceiling, looking for one more touch. How about a second one off ceiling, off of the backboard, unstoppable. Welcome back to another Radiant broadcast, bringing you some more Women's Rocket League. We've got the Star Chasers showdown presented by Ally coming in. So to kick things off again, we are starting off with the EU region. Yeah, it's nice to see Round Ramen. Everyone kind of gets to play everybody in their group and you really move on forward who deserves to be there who wins more games who who gets to be the best of the best and now you have to wonder can lotus 8 find something to tie up the score line and make game one that much more interesting because i just don't know cat jam providing more pressure crimson getting bumped into this ball i think she'll get a shot because of it crimson finds the third for cat jam and i think they get the goal they need to feel safer <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, do not adjust your sets. That was not lag or anything. That was just the bump completely confusing the physics engine for a second. We're talking about Crimson. This is one of the best players in the women's scene for a reason. Honestly, bump or no bump, that's probably going on net or in. So fantastic finish and potentially a great way to cap this game one off. Maybe one more for the road. Lobbed up and over. Third goal, fourth shot for Crimson. Yeah, great catch. Great way to stay on it for them in order to find a way to score. I, I can't believe it has taken them eight seconds into now two back to back within eight seconds. It seems itself. What a look by Steven. Really nice to be able to play that one that high, then be able to reset off the ceiling. Sometimes the defense kind of loses track of everything. Not really finding too much of a struggle on offense. Crimson lurking downfield yet again, but able to find the first attempt. How about the second? Trying to make it herself. The double, the triple, the quad tap attempt going on through. I don't know how you kept track of all the touches. I was way more focused on the fact that she was somehow still there the entire time. A master class of mechanics. Well, part of the reason we're not seeing a goal on the other side is these demos and the counterattack as if life isn't already difficult enough. Steven off the backboard, the putback from Crimson. It looks so simplistic, but really it's just Cat Jam being that smooth on the read. Now we have Sarah trying to throw that one in an awkward position. I, I kind of like that one throwing it low on the backboard, but looks like the defense was ready for that one. So not too many surprises coming out. Still seeing double commits, but maybe this one could work out that time off of the bar, off the bounce, and we're still going to stay scoreless. Maybe that's downfall if they're not going to make that contact, but right now I do like their ability to just kind of get right up into the face of shorties. This one, I think Slumpy might have wanted back, but instead going to work her value into a demo. It's Sarak, it's shorties with the dub. Looks like Slumpy is not one of those players. Excellent save from her to be able to keep that goal line clear. Always scary on the rebound. Aurora terrifying through the air, but somehow shorties still finding these saves. As it pops up, and Aurora will be to it first. The challenge does come on through, and Slumpy looking for an angle. We'll allow Sarek to go instead. Nice pass here, and this one actually back into Sarek. Say calculated or not, it doesn't matter, because that just looks beautiful. Ah, I'm just going to say it's on purpose. Sure, that's definitely in the comms. Brilliant <laughs> redirect, but I got to say, uh, it's coming down to this infield passing. Only for it to be challenged yet again. Arena and Aurora, the double commit pick up by Slumpy. Corner bounce. Does she have the read? It's a pass instead. Alonis is there, and Shorty is fine a second. Obviously a fantastic read off the corner from Slumpy, but it's the longtime teammate that still is aware that it might not be in. That's a difficult angle. Let's just be on the back post just in case. <laughs> in the past two games. <laughs> I mean, we can say that there's some coaching buff, but it doesn't mean that Anonymous is helpless. What a play to start us off from Chance from the ceiling to the back post. Highlight moment. Arena and Shans both there. Chance to pick it up. Has enough boost. We'll play with it. 
Looking for a follow-up. In fact, it's on target. That's safe off the crossbar and down. You're going to have those moments where they are not going to be too rattled by some of these plays. They might be rattled if you get another double. Shans apparently limited to one clip a game there. Not able to get another as the crossbar <laughs> says no. And now he'll off the corner off the ceiling. Nice tap down for Alanis. That's a flick and a half, but that's going to be too high. The follow-through is going to yield a temporary double. Good comms from Anonymous to be able to prevent that one from being even worse. However, you can't delay the inevitable 11. Seven seconds remaining, it's Serac with a potential dagger. Two seconds on the clock. Do we see extra time? No, shorties take this one in a sweep. Trying to play the corners is Lotus 8, but the 50s are working in favor of Dino Nuggies. The turn isn't made. Nines with some boost with control. Rexia blocker in front. Nines able to go from one end of the field to the other and ties up this game. And maybe Rexy can get a touch, but no, instead Nines is back there. Nines still controlling, but it's deflected away. Dino Nuggies playing a defensive wall right now. On the counter, not for some fantastic recovery work from Rexy. So let us say they're aware of it, but Violet is just a demon from this right side. That is a laser into the top corner. For Lotus 8 in these past two games, Rexy missing a shot there. Could be catastrophic. Does she have another touch, the 50? But instead, it is cleared away by the last defender. Judy out to midfield. The shot by Iris is good. And Dino Nuggies bring it back to only within one. I don't even care about the double commit because either way, that's just a solid finish from Iris. Stepping up, getting every single pixel. But Violet has been taking time, has been in the way. Just an absolute nuisance. Ooh. Nines, the angle, the save won't be made. Look at the angles. The protractors are out for Lotus 8. Press that F8, get that clipped on through. I have to say, Shiny Mia gets a little bit of dirt on that shiny read, but my word, what a crazy goal. It's just not that simple anymore for Lotus 8 to score, but it might be a crazy deflection that gets them back in. How about one more effort off the backboard? The demo on the shooter, pandemonium in front of the goal, and yet it's still 1-0 at least within your laps. Now you just have to make sure that you don't have a mental lapse here. Maybe through passing, maybe through number three. That's off the bar and the frame, nearly taking a cycle across the whole goal. It's a slow shot that Rexy is able to save away. Dino Nuggy knocking on the door of success at field, but hasn't been able to get through just yet until now. Judy shot off the post and in. How about from Judy? Back corner, Violet. A powerful clear that's just going to waste even more time off the clock. Follow through from Rexy. Only a roller right in front of that and it's Violet for three. It doesn't matter. A two goal lead can't be made in zero seconds. Lotus eight end up in third place in the group A bracket. But if it's open, then you, all you need to do is place it where it needs to be and Sparrow does just that. So Night Ravens with a lead early on, but Shan's working the side wall manages to get this one through. Kind of throw it out of reach as I just realized we're actually switching over to 2v2 because there's a rule one and Shan's <laughs> actually gets broken out of it. Wait, no, you can't do that. I mean, you can. No, 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 you cannot. <laughs> But, Prescriptively, but, you should not, personally, but that's just me. Maybe I'm just a purist. <sighs> Judge the gameplay that much more. No, all the misses in front of net. The shot now to be made. The double tap on through. Aurora comes out on top. Aurora is vibing. And I gotta say, that was Night Ravens breaking that one up earlier. So I feel like this is kind of karmic retribution coming on through. Sure, they get high percentage touches. And right now, you can see the half rotations are not having a lot of boost. Honestly, they can probably take a little bit more time on some of these, but clearly not too much, because otherwise you're gonna have Aurora with no angle at all getting a dish. That's crazy. The recovery, the flip into the ball to just poke it over Ava. Puts a little bit off target. Shans, fortunately, rolls off her car. Arena, everybody trying to get a piece of this ball to get a 50. This one poking on through. The demo, the ball to roll on through. And what a heads up play by Aurora to let that ball roll on in. We'll be able to follow up right off kickoff. Shans and Team Anonymous already putting on more shots. The 50s one. Aurora just picks up that ball one more time. They need possession, and right now it is in short supply. Aurora 
And Control manages to still retain control all the way from the corner into the back of the net. This is the second time we've seen her use her aerial control to beat out from that back wall. Anonymous, they are the third place team in their group and they will get prizing for their efforts. Welcome back, everybody. We finally landed on Championship Sunday. Playoffs incoming for the Star Chasers Showdown presented by Ally. And when we look over towards the bracket as well, I want to talk about the expectations here, Taco, because hey, you're looking at ACD versus Guild Academy up first, and then later on will be Shorties versus Cat Jam. It's something that they always throw something a little bit awkward at you, and you're not really sure how to handle it, especially with accuracy like that. We don't talk enough about Cloudy, and right now she is on fire. Yeah, I think Cloudy underutilized in her time previously at Gen G. Maybe didn't flow as much as that team would like. By the defense. Right now, Duck's kind of forced to take it to the corner. Is that's going to wrap all the way around for a lens to try to dive into the top corner? That's going to miss by a couple pixels. Where Duck's is very patient to finish it off. ACD, well played. The follow-ups and the positioning exactly where it's needed to be. They extend their lead slightly further. April pads another double commit to leave the net open. Ducks takes advantage, and that needs to be cleaned up. That's a poor, poor April in kind of a no-win situation right there. Alems is getting across the goal on that one. And honestly, as a defender, if you don't have the early jump, you kind of do have to just sit there and wait into the ceiling, looking for one more touch. How about a second one off ceiling, off of the backboard? Unstoppable from ACD. It's a fluid single effort play by a lens, beating to one of the initial touch of the second one on the shot. Put him back together and able to find a shot here. Maybe leave them in good standing. April indeed getting completely the perfect pass. Halfway through 2-2 two, two game. This shot here perfectly put to a lens and ACD back on top. And it comes down to the continuous effort that they put on the goal line. Opportunity after opportunity on the horizon. Jump here. Ducks threading the needle, finding the seventh for ACD. Are we actually in the game yet? It feels a little unusual to not have anything, but of course, as I say that, that's an open shot, and that's not going to be something you see often. And even worse, it's going to be a breakaway. It's going to be squandered. So I don't think Sniper realized just how open it could have been. Missed opportunities, it's just heartbreaking. You want both of these teams to succeed. You want them to finish finalize shots and you don't want to leave that opportunity open. Ducks, after the onslaught of shots and opportunities, takes one underneath, takes the over, hits the double tap read. Ducks, able to get the beat, April, who had, I believe, five, wow. or five saves last game. Clear out here, quickly taken away by April. Pads has a blocker, and April able to finish. There's nobody on the shot. Difficult angle, but Guild makes it count. Really clutch playmaking. Passes back and forth. Simple play, simple game. ACD, just draw this one up real nice. Uh, I do like that back and forth, but also the vision there. A lot of people are saying, well, why do you need the extra pass? We can see why. The defender had no idea what was about to happen. But it doesn't end up going on through. Look at the doink pads. Game number five to go to ACD as they punch their ticket to the grand finals. Top two prize pooling deserved. The tap over, over from Crimson is that 50 is going to be real dangerous all the way in the back post. That's going to be contacted off of the crossbar. The pinch doesn't go in Cat Jam's favor. Clear shot just over target is the follow up there. Slumpy slots in top left corner and Shorty's on the board first in game one. See with the long clear. That's I mean, that's all well and good, especially if she can do something else with it. What a redirect nearly fighting its way on the near post. That's why you always have to be ready in Rocket League because you never know when something's just going to come out on left field. It's still beating out the defense. There's just cutting them down bit by bit, getting those demos as well, and as well as maybe something a bit fancy. Okay, I get it. Let's put it into a redirect. A lot of from cross court. 
Alanis, hello? Solo play, she never touches the ground and that entire play. That's something I've also noticed about shorties is that they're not afraid to really just stack the goal line because they know whether they get on offense, they are razor sharp slicing through the back line. Alanis getting another, getting downfield and beating out these reads. It's still a chase from Slumpy, although the second follow through was not there. Then over to the other end, Crimson will thread the needle, gets past the defense here. The pop in midfield, flying through the demo as well, comes on through the bump, missed, but now the follow up by Alanis on the finish. Shorties bring the house in the house, ends up falling down. A couple of bumps coming on through, this one in front of Nen again, catch him. Another one of those teams that have been getting 90% of the way, just can't find the 10% finish. There's the extra 10% coming from Ravina. Comes on through, almost going to be able to get that one through, but instead it's gonna be Ravina taking over, looking for a pancake. How about a pass into Steven on the back post? Again, a quiet game, 0-0 zero, zero score line. One goal could be the deciding factor. Can this one be jammed on in? It's everywhere but inside of the net. It's really helping Cat Jam be able to stay in this game, not necessarily because they are struggling, but necessarily because Shorties have looked a bit more confident going forward, but it doesn't matter when the whiff comes through. Ravina from an angle, that's devastating. Towards the sky, Slumpy almost finding the angle. Would have been the first goal for Shorties for quite some time, but unfortunately just a mark in that one. I, I was watching the yellow trail or the orange trail and not expecting it to be on target, but unfortunately this pinch goes on through. Jam defense, another shot, another save made. Again, more pressure being put on this wow. one. Crossbar down and still out. This one on the 50 in front of net, but nobody there for the follow-up. Crimson and Zid sneaking, gets the outlet pass. The shot's on target and catch him. Do get the buffer goal to be by two. I really just love the understanding between Crimson and Steven. I'm probably calling it out right in advance as soon as that ball bounces down. Just barely 50 out of the way. Still flying up in front of net. Crimson won't knock it down. Zero seconds won't mount in two goals. Cat Jam take four in a row after the first two game losses. They take the series win. They will rematch ACD in the grand finals play a rematch a revenge match for cat jam of all time is alums is this acd roster really the best in the eu region or is cat jam going to play a spoiler oh, alert oh, potential but alums waiting possibly faking and causing a, an own goal an own goal of all things Ah, uh, sure. As we unfortunately will see Ravina take the catch. And I think the problem is the jump off the wall was done almost pre planned in her head, I believe. In midfield, Crimson taking her time, gets the pop, double tap, read, found, but what a save! Again on the goal line by Cloudy. And now Duck's taking it toward the other end. Aleb's taking patience, almost finds the shot. Sometimes one of the most important things, not feeling constricted, Crimson. In, already starting it off kind of spicy for the cat jam side unfortunately they only get the shot here ravina finishes it out and cat jam on the board of the first 17 seconds cloudy being able to get that first 50 and the follow through is also going to meet a similar fate however that's not before ducks curves all the way around this one with it hard angle to hit hits it beautifully that's not the touch that fills me with much confidence because it gives the opponent an opportunity to come through with the shot. It's always being that momentum-based game. Olem's not finding the answer, but it sets someone up. What a save again! And the squishy save by Crimson to deny multiple back-to-back -back saves by Cat Jam. Leave this one out of the net. ACD, though, they're not giving up without a fight. They're staying on it. They're still bumping. Shot to come on through. It's off the post and in by Cloudy. In, in the crucial moment, Ducks. Back across to Alems, that should be a wide open shot. Not the conventional one, off the backboard, no double, and another goal line stop by Cat Jam. How many more do they have in the tank? Can't find Ravina, everyone on the backtrack. Ducks finding the angle, Alems able to get pinch off the car of Ravina, and ACD back with the lead. Alems trying to close things out, but with a demo and a bit of a giveaway, it's not always a guarantee. Potentially just one more effort. Lead demo deflection. It's straight down. Crimson back post. It's gonna float through. The defense not ready for the crisscross. Zero second equalizer. What? What? That's all I can 
say of all the goals to go on in, it's the slow bounce shot. Rotate through for the next person to go because the last thing you want to do is to be able to throw everybody in on an attack. You don't really need to be on top of Ducks somehow getting past the defense. And after all those incredible saves and clutch moments, it's got to come down to a coast to coast dribble. Disgusting proposition to even contemplate, but even more so, it's something that is going to be a, a Difficult, arduous journey, a marathon, if you will, but they're starting off not only on the right foot, but a couple of them, they have a sprinting start in the game four. Hercules demos for Challenger and a miss here. Leaves this net open, the pass made, and Ravina shut on through. The selflessness by Steven to have the opportunity for catch him. There's always a fork in the road in moments like this, and I'm glad to see Steven taking the better of the two options. Finding a couple of ways to get touches, Ducks will not turn for this. Instead, Alem's chasing and Cloudy puts on an oval. Let's move on forward. Let's not get in our heads. I, I feel ACD just like we're struggling to understand what they're doing. They're struggling to maintain the headspace that they need. Has not had offensive pressure. Steven, another real zinger of a shot. This one being saved. And now ACD, maybe on transition, find the shot here. What a pass to the backboard and the Lems finish. And eventually it will happen. And of course it comes through just the oddest of setups. Cloudy, one thing to get a backflip, another one to be able to be perfectly set up and followed through. And very much ACD could get a lead if they're able to turn things and continue the momentum that they've created. Because you know what, a Lems is just too good. I can't even tell if it's a grand final. The way Lems plays sometimes, it feels like this is just a casual match. The reset into the 184, basically hybrid breezy, if you want to call it. It's just disgusting. A valiant effort, a really close game for a majority of the time. It seems like we were at one goal games, overtime game. Thank you to all the players who played and competed. And of course, congratulations to ACD for being our grand finalist. Being able to add a trophy to the case for this roster and also a little bit of bling, I'm sure, on Liquipedia does not <laughs> hurt either. But yes, ACD came in as the favorites and proved us all to be geniuses. Granted, not much of a guessing game when you see a team play like that.